Hey everybody, Connie Moss is here, Boss Moss. I am coming to you from the blue sofa in my home in Texas. And this is our very first segment of 2020, January 2020. And I'm um, very excited about it. Um, I have been wanting to do this for a very long time and just now have dedicated myself uh, to become consistent. <laughs> so basically what I want to do is my devotional. Um, I do a devotional every morning and um, it's just a few minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. So I wanted to share this new book with you. It's not really a new book. It's just a new series that I want to do. Uh, my son, Ben, gave me this book. It's called Seasons of Life by Charles Swindoll, uh, Dr. Charles Swindoll. And he's one of my favorite uh, authors, okay? So I wanted to share this with you. They're just small, short um, devotionals that I think will be really fun. And uh, I might, you know say a few words along the way. I don't know, but I'm just going to read them to you. I, I enjoy uh, reading them and just reading them out loud. And I think that you'll enjoy it too. And we can do this together. It's more of an uplifting thing. So what I would like for you to do right now is find your happy spot in your home or wherever you are, your car, maybe, I don't know. And uh, that's what I like to call my happy spot. This blue sofa is my happy spot. When I'm laying here with my laptop or with a book or I'm watching television from this comfy blue sofa, <laughs> um, it just makes me happy. So I do like to find happy spots and uh, get that joy from it. Another one of my happy spots is the beach. I love to go to the beach and just lay there on the sand and watch the waves come in and out and and listen to the sounds of the beach. It just makes me happy. Another one of my happy places is the mountains. I love to go to the mountains and snow skiing. You know, after age 50, I'm just kind of being careful about going skiing. I just love to go to the mountains and see the snow and all that kind of stuff too. So, um, very excited. I, I love my happy spot. So find your happy spot. Uh, you can be in your PJs like I am, um, and find you a nice soft blankie. I love my blankie I got for Christmas, uh, from my daughter and, uh, I have my smart, happy coffee. I think on the outside of this cup, it says, this calls for a happy dance. Yeah, I love that. But uh, this is my smart coffee. I love it. It tastes good, makes me feel good. So anything that will help lift those happy hormones, I'm all for it, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Get your place, get your, your blankie, whatever you need to do. Get you a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee and let's get started. All right, I'm just going to read this, all right? And um, and hopefully we'll get something out of it, okay? Mm, that stuff's good. By the way, while we're doing this, you know, I have a little fun question for you. What is your favorite creamer for your coffee? Just go ahead and put that in the comments. Uh, what is your favorite creamer for your smart coffee or your regular coffee? Um, I'd like to know. All right. Here we go. Now, this book is called Seasons of Life uh, by Dr. Charles Swindoll. And uh, we're starting with winter. We are in the winter months. All right. So, I'm just going to start at page one and read, and like I said, it's not very long, all right? Just the sound of the word whistling through our lips puts a metal chill up our spines. 
Winter seems to speak of bareness, barrenness, frigid feelings of discomfort and discontent. Icy shadows sprawled across frozen ponds, naked branches reaching up as if in supplication for relief. Boy, this is real deep stuff, isn't it? <laughs> oh boy. Short days, long nights, I can understand that. Fast fading memories of yesterday's fun in the sun, bike rides along the beach, the World Series, Thanksgiving. Heavy gray clouds and harsh winds sting our faces and steal our smiles. With grim determination, we trudge on, sometimes alone and isolated within our own little world of heavy garb and frosty windows. The dead of winter, awe, oh, an apt description. Not all agree. See, I wouldn't agree with this, okay? <laughs> Ski buffs and snow lovers resent such a depressing portrayal of their favorite season. See, fall and winter are actually my favorite season. So, I, I didn't get that other part there, okay? But so do artists who prefer a quaint cottage in the New Hampshire uh, rather than an ocean view at Malibu or a sandy beach at St. Thomas. Now, see, I could take either or. <laughs> For many, a year without winter would be a devastating disappointment. What better time to warm up alongside a crackling fire listening to some fine music and stare away in an evening sky. Toss in the joy of Christmas, the celebration of New Year's Eve, the Super Bowl, a Valentine's Day kiss, and you've got enough to make anybody forget 95 degree days. Um, I'm sorry, in Texas, it's more like 125, okay? Um, along with the flies and the mosquitoes at an August picnic. What a difference perspective makes, right? Winter, the ideal occasion to slow down, to invest a few hours uh, or extra hours in quiet reverence, to take a long walk over the freshly fallen white manna delivered earlier that day. You know, we had a snow here in Texas just a couple of days ago, and then it was gone by noon. <laughs> to remind ourselves that our God, our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. That's Psalms 115.3. Is it winter right now in the season of your life? Are you feeling depressed, alone, overlooked? spiritually on hold, cold, barren, beginning to wonder if your soul will ever thaw out, entertaining doubts that behind those thick, dark gray clouds, there exists a personal caring God. Take it by faith, my friend. He is there, and furthermore, he is neither deaf or dead. What you are enduring is one of those dry spell times when you'd rather curl up and cry than stand up and sing. But that's okay. Those times come. They also pass. When this winter season ends, you'll be wiser, deeper, and stronger. Therefore, in reverence, look up, be still, and discover anew that he is God, that he is doing whatever he pleases in your life. Maybe the following winter thoughts will change your perspective and help convince you. The questions are different, but each answer is the same. So listen to these questions. What will guard us against foolish extremes? What characterizes those who are habitually successful in sports or sales or some skill? What single quality in a business builds respect, 
deeper than any other. What brings security in relationships? What makes us choose a particular brand name over all others? What's needed most by parents in a home? What draws you to the same restaurant time and time again? What do you want most from your, let's say Amazon or from AT&T or your favorite grocery store? What will add more weight to your witness for Christ than anything else? The word is consistency. That's the answer to all nine questions and you know it's true. Steadiness, you can count on it. It'll be there tomorrow, just like it was today. Free from silly moods and sudden changes or fickle fads. Early in the day or late at night, consistency stands firm. When pain or hardship bites, consistency doesn't bleed. When the majority is tired and irritable, Consistency is stable and resilient. Not insensitive or boring, but reliable and faithful. Not opposed to change or reason, but trustworthy. Not stubborn, but solid. Yes, that's it, solid. It's the stuff most mothers are made of when their little ones get sick. And missionaries who lose themselves in their labor, even though it yields limited fruit. It reveals itself in faithful employees who show up on time, roll up their sleeves, and commit themselves more to doing the job than watching the clock. Diligence is its brother. Dependability is its partner. Discipline is its parent. Consistency, a living model of patience, determination, and strength, regardless of shifty, ruthless times. The blast of ridicule and criticism may punch it in the face, but consistency stands and takes it as silently as a bronze statue takes the tempest. One poet calls it a jewel, another an anchor of iron. It knows little of ups or downs, highs or lows, blue Mondays or holiday hangovers. It hates tardiness and absenteeism. It thrives on sacrifice and unselfishness. It's an obvious mark of maturity. It's hanging in there day in and day out in spite of everything that could get you sidetracked. In biblical terms, consistency is a subtle, supple thread woven into the fabric of scriptural truth. Hmm. Paul had it in mind when he told Timothy to be ready in season and out of season. That's in 2 Timothy uh, 4.2. And when he exhorted the Galatians, let us not lose heart, for in due time we shall reap if we do not grow weary. That's in Galatians 6.9. And then James saw it as a stabilizing trait, which he called endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result that you may be perfect. James 1, 3, and 4. We are reminded that Abraham was consistent when it became to believing God's promise to him because he never wavered. And that's in Romans uh, 4, 20. But best of all, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and yes, forever. And that's in Hebrews 13, 8. One of the most attractive magnetic characteristics of Christ is his consistency. When you need him, he is there. He's there even when you don't think you need him. You're never too early or too late. 
He's never in a lousy mood, nor will he ask you to call back during office hours. He's available because he's immutable. With him, there's no new year or old year. He is the same regardless. Consistency. It's the jewel worth wearing. It's the anchor worth weighing. It's the thread worth weaving. It's the battle worth winning. Okay, so here's just a little thought. Branching out this week, show up early at work every day this week and then try to be happy positive every day work at being consistent here's some scriptures for you to read for this week romans 4 verse 1 well let's do this just read the whole whole chapter of romans okay romans 4 okay that whole chapter and then on 1 Timothy, read 4, 15 through 16. And then Hebrews 6, 1 through 12. Try those out, okay? And then I'll see you next week from the blue sofa. And we'll go on to the next season of reverence. Talking about the tongue. <laughs> All right, you guys have a blessed day. Thank you, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.